So one of the questions I get asked a lot about is what can I expect to find in my wildlife pond? And I'm going to show you a few of those individuals today that I've found just while we're clearing out this latest wildlife pond in London to give it a revamp. And these little guys are damselfly nymphs. Now they have a big cousin, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but these guys are obviously the nymph which are likely to be in this form for pretty much a year and then they will emerge obviously as the adult damselflies things such as azure common blue and large red damselflies so these are just one of the things you can expect to find and if we take a look at some of the other life forms by the way all these animals we're keeping in this bucket just while the pond restoration works are going on so let's have a look we've got a bit of a bit of a goodie bag here bear in mind this is february when i'm doing this so it's a bit cool however I want to show you some of the things we've got. So these guys are ram's horn snails. And as you can see, they are nice little snail. And again, have a lovely twisty shell on their back, a bit like some of the shells you'd find at the beach. And these live in most garden ponds. Great ones for cleaning up algae and that sort of thing. Um, and you get these cracking snails as well which are a lovely shape they almost look like fossils but uh, again another good element for a wildlife pond and i'm going to delve deep now and see if i can muster up the king of the pond the apex predator might take a bit of rummage in This, by the way, is hornwort, and this is the key to a good and healthy wildlife pond. And this stuff is your oxygenating plant. And we will wash the duckweed off, because duckweed can become a bit of a problem. You'll know this stuff, I'm sure. <laughs> but the oxygenator, these are the plants that are going to keep your water crystal clear and make a very healthy habitat for all the things that are living in your pond. So... Come on, I know you're in here somewhere, because I've just collected about 50 of you. And I'm looking for, in particular, the slightly bigger relative. Oh, here we go. This will do. <laughs> Look at that. Now, this is my favourite amphibian. And this is a male smooth newt. And many of you will know these guys from seeing them in and around your pond. Of course, they'll be coming to ponds at this time of year. I mean, last week it was literally minus three, minus four during the day and frost and snow on the ground. But now they're back in a pond and looking for a female. And you can tell it's a male. Look at those fantastic colours. You can see those lovely orange and dark markings on the underside. You tell it's a male by this bulbous pouch here, just at the base of his tail. And they use this tail, you can see it's got a lovely kind of blue stripe down it for obviously displaying two females and attracting a mate. And we've already collected some, uh, well, probably 20 of these from this pond, which we'll be looking to keep in these buckets while they are uh, or while the pond is being uh, renovated, we're going to make the pond much bigger, a bit deeper as well, so a bit more attractive for toads. Toads prefer deeper water. And um, yeah, a nice, nice find. There's a, a couple of females in here as well, so I'll pop him back and see if I can find a few more. Another damselfly nymph there. They're very hard to find. And the other question I get asked a lot while these chaps are evading me is when is the best time to clean out my pond? If you've got any works you want to do on your pond, the best time is actually uh, just after everything has kind of finished its life cycle in the pond. So probably mid-summer when all the tadpoles and the um, dragonflies have emerged as nymphs um, that's probably the best time, although you can do it if you're careful at most times of the year. Uh, 
They're eluding me now. I think I put, I'm going to grab this other bucket because I put a few more in this one. Brilliant stuff, this hornwort. And there are other oxygenators you can use as well. There's spiked water milfoil, which is uh, very similar to this, has a lovely little uh, pale pinky white flower that pokes up above the surface of the water. Let's get right down and see if we can't find one. Typical, isn't it? I spent the last 20 minutes pulling them out of the pond. <laughs> I've got another newt there, look. There's another male. The females, by the way, are uh, a lighter colour brown and don't have this kind of display fin along the back, which is purely for display purposes, I believe. There's another male. There's another male. <laughs> Three. Let's have a seat. Four males, look at that. Very healthy population of these amazing amphibians in this garden. So obviously we're looking to make these works happen as quickly as possible so we can put them back in their new home. Aha, here we go. This is what we're looking for. Another male, but also this kitty. Now, that is the apex predator of the pond. You might not think it by its size, but that is the nymph of a dragonfly, which will be in this form for sometimes two to three years before they emerge as either one of the hawkers, so southern hawker, or um, one of the chasers as well. You've got broad bodied chasers, four spotted chasers, many different dragonflies found in the UK of which there are oh there's actually another one here look stuck to that newt's tail just down there I'm going to put a couple of these newts back so you can get a, a good look at these oh, let's just drop back in well there's the other one anyway you can see that one is uh, yeah and they actually have an extendable jaw that uh, extends out from underneath their head to grab prey, quite incredible, voracious predators these are, but uh, amazing and absolutely essential to any wildlife pond. And of course, these will eat almost anything. They'll eat tadpoles, they'll eat uh, many insects, water boatmen, pond skaters, anything they can get their jaws on, basically. So they really are the king of the pond. So there you go. I'll leave you with this. This is a female, actually, smooth newt. And as you can see, she's a little bit browner and less markings on the underneath and less of a bulbous pouch at the base of the tail. And uh, yeah, beautiful creature. And of course they will hibernate through the winter months in log stacks and uh, log piles in stone walls and everything else and of course emerge at this time of year it's the middle of February now to find a mate and we have found one already that is pregnant in the pond so yeah nice to see so hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea as to what you can expect to find in your pond obviously you can find common frogs and common toads in the UK um, we've already found common frogs here, but uh, not any toads yet. Oh no, we have found a toad actually. I'll put a little clip in of that now. It was hiding behind one of the sleepers in the garden. And um, yeah, really nice to see. Obviously that was before the snow hit, so uh, it did well to stay hidden, I'm sure. Yeah, so these chaps are gonna stay in these buckets just while we have a bit of a clear out of this pond, reline it, give them a new home, and then we can put them back in. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. 
and stay tuned. I've got many more videos to show you of how to create these wildlife ponds and many, many more topics to come. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.